G'day everybody and welcome back to our curated playthrough of Mass Effect. Alright, here we are back in the Tereshkova system on the planet Antibar and you may be wondering why I'm here. Uh, I did have a watch of the previous episode and I realized that I completely missed uh, an interesting structure on this planet after we had defeated the Thresher Moor. And uh, it's actually located just over there, so I think we were a little bit too distracted with all of these dead geth and dead people to even realize that there's actually a Prothean ruin over here. So let's just very quickly uh, make our way out here and investigate. Alright, so a Prothean data disk. Searching the ruins, you discover a Prothean data disk. It must have been dropped by one of the Thresher Moor's many victims. There we go, guys. Alright, yeah, I thought I'd come back because, uh, yeah, I totally missed that. Uh, and, uh, maybe some of you guys would have probably watched and, uh, got a little bit frustrated with, uh, that fact. But, uh, yeah, here we are, guys back at it again. We have been uh, investigating all these Geth incursions on the several planets within this, uh, not this system, this cluster I suppose you can say. And uh, yeah, we've actually defeated the Geth in about three or four different systems. And in the end we are left with uh, this one system which has uh, appeared within the cluster. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, this Geth Bunker, which apparently exists in the Grissom system of the Armstrong Nebula. So that Grissom system was not accessible before. So we are going to go back to the Normandy and see if we can uh, I guess get an assault started on the Geth Bunker located on that system. Alright, so let's back out here from Tereshkova and here it is, the Grissom system. So presumably this is the last Geth outpost that we'll need to deal with. So let's get to it. Alright, so the Grissom system itself has several planets to investigate, so let's start from the top as usual. Nottenban. Nottenban is a hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of ammonia. Molecular nitrogen is present in the highest levels of the atmosphere, giving the planet its odd violet tint. The upper levels of Nottenban's atmosphere are inhabited by shoals of tiny ammonia-based lifeforms, no larger or more complex than the plankton of Earth's oceans. Held aloft by air pressure and wind, these bioluminescent cre creatures constantly flee from the approach of the Terminator. Should they be exposed to the light and heat of Grissom, they die. Okay, interesting. And then there's the moon here of Nottenband called Solcrum. Warning, level 1 heat hazard. Solcrum is the largest moon of the gas giant Nottenband. It has a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. The crust is composed of various metals with deposits of sodium. As with every body in the solar system, the surface is scorching hot and thoroughly irradiated by the blue giant Grissom. Surface excursions without proper protective gear are certain to prove fatal. On approach to Nottenban, Normandy's passive sensor, uh, sensor array intercepted a fragmentary coded transmission from the surface of Sulcrum. Attempts to decrypt the message were fruitless. It does not appear to be in, in any software coding language used by the Citadel races. And it seems like we can land here, so I'm guessing this is where the Geth might be. Let's back out and just investigate the rest of the planets here, so 
Zaharex. Zaharex's nitrogen argon atmosphere is being blasted away by the solar wind of the blue giant Grissom. Its surface consists of seas of loose silica dust some kilometers deep, which periodically swirl into global sandstorms. Many unmanned probes to Zaharux have been lost over the years, though investigation has attributed all to mechanical failure or com computational error. A popular extranet meme insists the entire planet is composed of dormant nanotechnology created millennia ago by a race even more advanced than the Protheans. According to the story, Zaharex's silica dust is actually disassembler robots which periodically awaken to defend themselves. Though discounted by every reputable scientist, this theory has been popularized by a series of sensationalistic texts by Asari author Delsay or Thissa. Let's survey. While scanning this planet, you detected a large deposit of beryllium on a small nearby moon. Alright, very cool. And it uh, looks like uh, there are internet memes even in this age. Very nice. Bender. Bender has a dense atmosphere of sulfur dioxide and chlorine. Though technically classified as a terrestrial world, but the surface of the planet has never cooled enough for a crust to form. It is a global sea of molten rock like Zaharux. Its atmosphere is being blasted away by the solar wind. Once its thick atmosphere is gone, Bender's surface will be a mere 400 degrees Celsius. Jeez, that's, that's nice and cool, right? <laughs> Scans of Bender uncovered an ancient Solarian vessel. A small team was dispatched to search for valuables. The only item of value recovered was a League of One medallion. Alright, and I think those were the only planets. Let's just quickly check the asteroid fields here. Whoop, here we go. Rocky asteroid. An asteroid composed of mixed metals and silicates. Scans of the asteroid field revealed a small deposit of polonium. Very good. Let's just quickly scan the rest of the field here. Okay, now we'll just take a look at the inner belt. Okay, nothing on the inner belt it seems. So let's go back to Sulcrum and let's land. Alright, so for this one, we're still gonna keep Ash and Tali with us. And uh, I think once we complete the entire Geth incursions assignment, we might go with some other characters for the next outing. Alright, very nice, and uh, caught a glimpse of that blue sun over there, or blue star rather. Very cool. Um, Alright, let's take a look at the map, and let's see what we can get up to here. So there is the... what is this? It doesn't really say what it is, but I'm guessing that's where we need to go to find the Geth. And there is an anomaly and some debris here, so we'll start with the anomaly and work our way to the debris and then to the get, so it'll be counterclockwise this time around. So, let's get to it. I think we should be able to climb up here, so... Hopefully that's not going to be too much of a challenge. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. <laughs> we made it. Just trying to see what the best way to take would be. It seems pretty okay if we go through here, so let's try and do that. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now, let's see, how can we get to this anomaly? Actually, let's just take a quick look again. 
All right, so it definitely looks like it might be on top of this mountain. So we're going to have to figure out a way to climb it. And this side here looks, I guess, not as steep as some of the other sides. So maybe we can just try to climb through here. Okay, here we are. Um, not sure what we're looking for exactly. Okay, there's something there on the ground. Let's take a quick look. An Asari capsule. There were several artifacts stored here, all worthless except for one of Matriarch Dilanaga's writings. Whether it was uncovered at this dig site or elsewhere is unclear. Hmm, okay. So this is apparently some sort of dig site. Um, oh wow. Just look at that. Man, I'd love to be able to go to somewhere with a view like this. Jeez. Well, here's hoping. Um, the future may hold something like that for humanity. Speaking of, Artemis 1 had just launched today, which is, well not today actually, um, this, uh, this last week, actually. Uh, and yeah, it was glorious. Um, very excited. Uh, excited that humans will once again be going to the moon. I don't think we've been there for a very long time. Now let's see. Um, debris here. So I'm guessing this is probably just another crashed probe. I feel like we've never really seen anything aside from a crashed probe every time we visit those debris. So, um, but you know what? I'm not going to say no because... Uh, they often contain some decent weapons and upgrades and stuff. Loot is always good. Okay, there it is. Damn it. Alright. Very good. Yeah, one thing that always bothers me is that every planet we seem to land on always has some form of debris and, you know, it always turns out to be a crashed probe. I always think, why can't we make these things last a very long time? You know, why do they have to always crash onto these planets all the time, so... <laughs> but I suppose maybe there are various reasons for it. Uh, or maybe even those probes are designed to eventually fall. Possibly. I think uh, recently there was uh, also a, a real-life probe that was sent to... I can't remember which planet in our solar system, maybe... Um, Mercury or Venus or something like that, and we intentionally crashed it. Or actually, maybe it was uh, maybe it was an asteroid that we intentionally crashed it on, uh, and it was uh, sort of a bit of an experiment, if you will. Ooh, look at that! You can see the uh, planet. Oh, I can't remember the name of the planet now, but uh, yeah, that's a very nice view right there. Okay, I'm sort of flying in blind here. I should have figured out what would be the best pathway. I think maybe if we just go through here, that seems like the path of least resistance. I think. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm seeing some enemy presence on radar already. Not sure what they might be. Could be static defense. Oh lord, okay, yep. Um, those are two colossi, I think. We just want to be a bit careful here. We've got a little bit of cover to work with, which is good. Want to try and evade as much as we can. Ooh, we've also got these uh, get in these towers as well. Firing rockets at us. Very nice. I think the problem with these colossi are they do actually recharge their shields, so sometimes maybe it might be better to keep focusing on them until they go down. Alright, that's one. I think we've got all of the geth that were in the towers. Just need to deal with this last colossi here. Or colossus, rather. Alright. Very good. Anything else? Doesn't look like it. We do need to go inside, though, so... Let's uh, be ready here. Alright, plenty of targets in there. Let's be a bit careful here. Wow, Tali is getting wrecked. Okay, that was a bit close. As the last geth falls, you hear music from across the room. On the monitor, a quarian stands before a hushed crowd, warbling a mournful a cappella of words and innocence lost. The recorded song is dispatched to the geth worlds behind the Perseus Veil. The transmitter shuts down. Hmm, okay. That's very interesting. Perimeter clear. So, would that suggest that the Geth were attracted to the song, and that's why they've come out of the Perseus Vale to... to sort of, uh, I don't know, invade, if you will? Just making some assumptions, guys. But, uh, anyway. Let's grab the loot. You discover a number of encrypt, uh, encrypted Geth data files. In the proper hands, they could reveal much about the evolution of the Geth since the banishment of the Quarians. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's download that shit. Alright. Firestorm 9... Reaper 9, Duelist 9, that's a lot of level 9 stuff here. Really good. I actually don't really remember 
how high the item levels get to maybe level 10 or level 11 or something like that. Or maybe even higher, I don't know. Anyway. Let's check to see if there's anything up here. Doesn't look like it, but uh, just in case, let's have a look behind here. Nothing. And yeah, I don't think there was anything on the ground level as well in this room at least. So I think that's it guys. And that is the last of the Geth, I'm pretty sure. Which means all that's left to do really is to go back to the Normandy and I think we just have to report it to Admiral Hackett, right? So let's go. Now let's take a look at that journal once more. Geth incursions. Oh, okay, it's already complete as well. So, um, yeah, maybe we don't even need to report it to to the Admiral. All right, well, in that case, we need to decide what we're going to do next. Now, Cerberus is technically on the top of my list here, but I think what might be better for us to do is to deal with one of the older assignments specifically this one here called hostile takeover so we met uh we met a lady ah here it is helena blake uh her name is on the citadel and she wants to take uh sorry she wants us to take out two of her rivals in the syndicate that she works for and i guess they're both located on different worlds or something like that so I think we should get this one done because we've had this one in the uh, journal for quite a while now. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be good for us to just uh, be done with it and uh, hopefully we get some really good loot out of it. Perhaps maybe in the process we might be able to also uh, do something about Miss Blake there. So, and I think, sorry, looking back again here. Yeah, okay, so we've got the Han and Dis systems, and where are they located? Gemini Sigma, and the uh, Hades Gamma cluster. So we'll uh, head there. Now before we do that though, I do want to do a couple of things here. So one is, I want to have a chat with Joker, because I feel like we haven't had a chat with Joker for a while, and, you know, we did the Pharos mission. So I wonder if he has any comments on that. Uh, hey, Commander, next time we touch down, let's try not to park the ship in a colony of mutant zombies. Just thinking out loud here. Good point. Good point. Note taken. I have to go. All right, see you. Thank you very much, Joker, for your uh, insightful comments. All right. Um, and secondly, I do want to take a look at our equipment again because uh, I think it's time to take some of our other squad members out and I'm thinking it's been a while since we've taken Rex the Krogan with us so uh, we might take him out and yeah we'll probably bring Caden along for the ride as well so we have I guess two biotics to work with Let's see here. Let's just quickly check on our own equipment for a second here. So we've got... We're using Breaker 7 right now. So we could actually upgrade to Breaker 9 if we wanted to, or we could take something else. I think uh, the Breaker's working out pretty well for us. So let's keep going with the Breaker. And I won't really mess around with the upgrades for now because I feel like we've only just changed that up recently. Uh, do we have any better armor? I don't think so. I think the onyx is still what I want to go with for now. Uh, sorry guys, uh, and just going back to snipers. So we are on Punisher 8. I mean, we could go back to the Volkov if we wanted to and take Volkov 
9. I do quite like the Volkov. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. And yeah, we'll keep all of the upgrades for now. Now, let's quickly check up on Rex's equipment. Now, recently we also found like a very good um, armor set, right, for uh, for Krogans. I think this is the one, Mercenary 10. And yeah, this is definitely much better than what he has right now. I think he's, oh yeah, okay, so his set is exactly the same one, it's Mercenary as well. So it'll give us the same look, but just better stats. Oh, actually a different look. <laughs> Actually, yes, the one before was a light armor, I think, so and this one's a heavy one. So, or, or maybe the previous one was medium or something. But anyway, let's look at his upgrades here. So, ablative coating is what he's got right now. We could probably do, like, ablative coating as well here. Oh, actually, no, we don't have a better one. Hmm. I think this sounds pretty good here, Combat Exoskeleton. And we can also give him another one. So this will give him more mobile accuracy. Uh, or we can give him better shields. Hmm, tough choice. Let's give him the uh, the kinetic exoskeleton. All right. Now, actually, sorry. Still want to check on Rex because uh, he probably could do with some better weapons as well. So he's on katana eight right now. I'm surprised that storm ten is not as good. So, I don't know what the deal is with that, but uh, we've got a few other better ones here. Avalanche 9. Doesn't sound bad. Let's go with that. Let's take a look at his upgrades here. Snowblind rounds. Okay, I, I think we'll keep that in that case because that seems to be very good. High caliber barrel. I suppose we don't really have too much of a choice here, but we'll give him Scram Rail, and uh, got Kinetic Stabilizer here, yeah, I suppose that's fine. And then, let's take a look at his Amp. Okay, we definitely have some better Amps for him. Savant 8, you can take that. I think that's okay for Rex, let's quickly check on Caden here. We probably don't really need to upgrade too much for Caden, but uh, let's take a look at his pistols here. Okay, Razor 9, we'll take that. Uh, and we've got Shredder Rounds currently. I think we could probably switch this up to sledgehammer rounds. And then... Okay, Omni tool wise Yeah, maybe we can give him the Logic Arrest tool. Amps. Okay, Prodigy doesn't sound too bad. Let's go with that. And Armor. So this duelist armor definitely seems a little bit better than what he has right now. Let's take a quick look. Or we can go with the Liberator. Gives him a little bit more tech slash biotic protection. Hmm. I think we go with more shields though. The less damage we can take to actual health, the better I think. So. Alright, looking good for Caden as well. So I think our prep is complete. And 
it is now time for us to uh, make our way to either the Hades Gamma Cluster or I think it's called Gemini Sigma Cluster and see if we can deal with those uh, syndicate bosses. Message from Admiral Hackett, Commander. Patching it through. We just received your report. Looks like this Geth incursion was bigger than we thought. They were probably preparing for a major offensive in the system. We're increasing patrols in the Armstrong Cluster to make sure they can't establish another foothold in the region. Nice job, Shepard. You saved a lot of human lives on this mission. Hack it out. All right. Let's back out of Grissom and the Armstrong Nebula, and yeah, we just need to make our way to both of these clusters. Maybe we should start here with the Hades Gamma Cluster, see what, uh, and see what we're dealing with here. So, okay, so this is familiar. We've been to Farinata, Cacus, and Antius, but we haven't been to these two systems here. I think the location of one of the, uh, I guess, syndicate bosses is here in the DIS system, but we may as well investigate Plutus as well since we're here. So let's have a quick look. All right. Let's, as usual, start at the top. The Yaria. The Yaria is a huge hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of methane in its atmosphere. Nice and simple. Clocrolis. I think that's how you say it. Clocrolis. Clocrolis is a modest rock planet, roughly the size of Mars. It has a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. Its scorching hot surface is mainly composed of silicate rock with deposits of aluminium and other light metals. Clocrolis has a very weak magnetic field in addition to very high levels of solar radiation. It is not suitable for mass effect drive discharge operations. Scans from this planet revealed several deposits of samarium. Next up, we've got Minjito. Minjito is a sun-baked wasteland of sodium chlorates and radioactives. Its relatively light mass has left it tidally locked to the star Plutus. With a dayside hot pole and a nightside cold pole, the powerful solar wind has stripped most of the atmosphere away. While scanning the planet Minjito, you detected a large deposit of uranium. Nonual Level 1 Heat Hazard Though it is one of the oldest entries in the star charts, Nonual has not yet been fully mapped. It is the largest body in the asteroid belt of the blue star Plutus. Not only large enough to maintain a spherical shape, but also massive enough to retain the noxious carbon and sulfur dioxide venting from its many volcanoes as an atmosphere. Nonual is rapidly volcanic, and the source of its great heat is also the source of its inordinate mass. Nonual is a secondary source of element zero, coalesced around a large chunk of ESO ejected by a supernova billions of years ago. Surface conditions are extremely hazardous in addition to the thin crust and numerous magma flows. Wide stretches of the landscape are coated with slippery ash and cinders ejected from the volcanoes. Okay, and we can land on this one, but uh, let's back out for now. Maidla. Maidla is a terrestrial planet with a light atmosphere of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. The surface is hot and mainly composed of magnesia with deposits of sulfur. Over a dozen volcanoes are currently erupting across the surface. 
All right. And there is an asteroid belt here, so let's just quickly scan all of that. See if we can find anything interesting. Okay, doesn't seem to be the case there. All right, so uh, we should land on Nonuel, and even though this is not really our ultimate destination, we might as well just do a little bit of exploring here and see what we can find. So we're taking Rex and we're taking Caden with us. And uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be uh, a good squad. Hopefully we can take most things down. All right, not a bad looking planet this, but uh, unfortunately there's like pieces of ash falling everywhere. And I think this is supposed to be like, um, I, don't, I guess hardened magma, but uh, anyway, let's take a look at the map here. So there's an anomaly here, debris here, and a warlord's outpost. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is not where we need to be for the assignment that we've taken, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll investigate that Warlord's outpost anyway and see what we can find there. Uh, let's start with this anomaly first. You can definitely see something there. Not entirely sure what we're looking at though. Maybe some kind of structure. Okay, and there's some kind of transport here which is in very good condition in fact it's it's levitating it's still flying <laughs> that actually looks sick and i wish we were traveling around in one of these although maybe there is some benefit in being in the mako though uh let's look around here we do have the hazard to contend with as well Judging by the footprints in the ash, the two mercenaries were facing each other over the crate when they died. Both suffered single gunshot wounds and have a rifle close beside them. Well, we'll take the contents, thank you very much. Prying open the crate, you discover a carefully wrapped handwritten copy of one of Matriarch Dilanaga's treaties. Uh, tr tre treatises. It is unlikely she penned it herself, but the following the, the flowing brushwork and intricate watercolor uh, illustrations clearly show the hand of a master scribe. Hmm, okay, and I guess these guys were fighting over it, and uh, maybe did a little bit of a Mexican standoff, western style. This mercenary was carrying a League of One medallion. There is no indication of how or where he found it. Mm, nice. Bit more cash there. Always welcome. Nothing here. Ooh. Cheeky upgrade kit there. I'll take that. Alright, I think that's it. Let's get back to the Mako here before we burn to a crisp. All right, that was uh, a bit close. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next destination here. So let's get to that debris. Nice uh, view over here. I don't know if this is a sunset or a sunrise. Still impressive nonetheless. Yet again, another crash probe. All right, very good. Now, on to this last destination, which is the 
Warlord's Outpost. So yeah, again, I have no idea what this is, but we'll go there and take a quick look anyway, and maybe uh, there is some sort of quest to be had there. I'm not entirely sure where all this ash is coming from, to be honest. Oh, look at that. Okay, so that must be the uh, the outpost. Ooh, okay. So that explains the ash. <laughs> we've got some lava going on this side. I don't think uh, we've seen many worlds with lava before. I know we had uh, an earlier mission where we had to deal with the Geth on um, on a lava planet. But yeah, we don't come across these lava planets very often, do we? So, um, yeah, very impressive sight there. Anyway, sorry, getting distracted, guys. Let's uh, go and see if we can speak to this warlord and... I don't know, find out what he's doing here. <laughs> okay, this terrain seems to be pretty rough. Okay, I see some minerals there as well. Should try and grab that. So this Warlord doesn't seem to be protecting his base very well, uh, don't see anyone. Although he has a couple of mean looking transports here with gigantic cannons on them. So I'm lucky that we don't actually have to face off with them. Ooh, okay, and the door seems to be locked. Uh, hmm. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, guys. Uh, yeah. I suspect, guys, uh, it could be a quest related to being a renegade. Uh, and since we're doing a Paragon run, we actually don't have any of our uh, renegade... Um, or we don't have uh, a renegade status right now so we might not be able to actually complete that quest but at least we know where it is at least we've explored the planet as well but uh, yeah we are trying to be a paragon here so uh, if we have to skip that mission then so be it all right nice bit of samarium there and I think that's it. I mean, we could check out that lava area again if we wanted to, but I don't think there's really anything there. So let us return to the Normandy and yeah, get a move on because we do need to deal with these um, these syndicate bosses. So let's back out of Plutus and head over to the Dis system. Okay, a few more planets to check out here. So, the first one is Raisha. Raisha is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with, an, with traces of sodium and ammonia in its atmosphere. During the brief gold rush of, sorry, gold rush to Clensol, a few companies established an infrastructure for helium-3 skimming and deuterium mining on Raisha's icy moons. When Clensol proved to be less wealthy than expected, the facilities were stripped for parts and abandoned. Scans of the planet Raisha revealed an old unmanned shuttle. Your salvage team found Turian goods on board, all marked with the Tridend colony insignia. Clensol. 
Lensol has a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. Its first geological surveys were performed by Batarians and suggested areas of great mineral wealth. Human mining concerns spent billions of credits hustling to the distant systems and sinking test bores to claim the system for humanity. But Clensol had already an average level of mineral wealth. Sorry, had only an average level of mineral wealth. Valuable, but hardly worth the rush and expense. Merida Industria, a small Mexican company hoping to strike it rich in their first extrasolar mining venture, had to file for bankruptcy protection. Investigation revealed the Batarian crew had deliberately falsified their surveys, hoping it would encourage human rivals to invest in a costly boondoggle. While unethical, this was not technically illegal, and the Batarian government disavowed the personal actions of a few misguided patriots. The planet is still littered with abandoned mining bases, which are often used as temporary meeting places for criminals. And I suppose our mission is on this planet, but we'll uh, check out all of the other planets first. Niarum. Niarum is a terrestrial world with a thin atmosphere of methane and argon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of basaltic rock. Its most prominent feature is the Elos Rift Valley, a long volcanic divergence zone that stretches across half of the northern hemisphere. While scanning this planet, you detected a large deposit of titanium on a nearby moon. Alright, very good. And next we've got Jartar. Jartar is a terrestrial world with a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. The surface is hot and mainly composed of unremarkable silicates. Occasional deposits of aluminium, magnesium and other light metals can be found. Jartar is noted for the discovery of the Levi sorry, Leviathan of Dis, the apparent corpse of a genetically engineered living starship. The Leviathan was found in the bottom of a crater by a Batarian survey team and estimated to be nearly a billion years old. It disappeared after a visit to the system by a Batarian dreadnought 20 years ago. Since then, the Batarians have steadfastly denied that the Levi Leviathan existed at all, and all the more vociferously when shown recordings of the corpse made by Solarian researchers. Alright, and one more planet. Remar. Remar is an icy terrestrial with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and krypton. Its surface is mainly composed of frozen ammonia with deposits of tin and other light metals. When exposed to sunlight, Remar's ammonia can melt, forming equatorial seas of the toxic chemical. This has allowed a profusion of simple fungus and lichens to evolve in the low energy environment. A byproduct of their metabolism causes them to glow very faintly. While the light of an individual is insignificant, large patches seem to reinforce the seem to reinforce the light of one another and are visible from space. Ah, cool. So this is basically all that bioluminescence. Almost looks like, you know, dotted cities and stuff. Very cool. All right, and we've got a asteroid belt here. So let's There we go. Got a metallic asteroid, a metal-rich asteroid. Scans of the asteroid fi uh, field revealed deposits of lithium. All right, anything else here? And the answer to that is no. Well, let us land on Clensol and see if we can find one of these syndicate bosses. Alright, here we are on Clensol. Uh, 
I don't know guys, not the most inviting of planets if you ask me. Uh, good if you're a skier or a snowboarder probably, but uh, I'm definitely not one of those people. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at what we can do here. So we've got a few things. Looks like the Syndicate hideout is closest to us, so we might actually do the Syndicate hideout first and then do the rest, so quick U-turn here and uh, I don't think it's that far at all, so we should get there pretty quickly. is a little bit steep. Let's try and get down. I can see a mineral marker near the uh, Syndicate uh, outpost as well, so I'm going to have to keep an eye out for that. Okay. Just see if we can check for these minerals first. What do we have here? Platinum. Very good. And the Syndicate base must be somewhere over here somewhere. Okay, I see something right over there. I'm definitely, uh, targets on radar as well. Surprise! Nice. No match for the Mako, that's for sure. So it looks like this base is one of those underground types. Let's see what we can find inside. Okay, I can see a target there. Ooh, okay, we are already under fire. Let's move our guys up. See if we can snipe some of these guys. Nice. Okay, they're pushing up, it seems. Let's, uh... I think we're gonna do a quick lift here. Okay, Rex is taking quite a bit of damage there. One more. Let's see if we can flank him. Actually, two more. Nice. Oh, this is the crime boss. No wonder he's taking so many hits. <sighs> Alright. Crime Lord defeated. Helena was right. These guys had quite the operation going. But that's all going to change. One down, just one more to go. Alright. 
Well, there you go. Time to take all the stuff. Let's see if they've got any loot hidden away in various places. Okay. Definitely seems a little bit empty. Yeah, nothing here. Let's check some of the other rooms here. Hopefully they've got some stuff to take. Uh... Okay. So this is a little bit of a different layout. That's definitely blocked off, so... Let's check this one. Yeah, you can really tell that the first Mass Effect was made with uh, a strict budget, if you will, because a lot of the environments are heavily recycled. Not such a bad thing. I suppose they did their best with what they had. But uh, I wish uh, they would actually do, instead of a uh, an improvement on textures and stuff like that, I wish they would have done like a remaster of the entire game. That would be awesome. You know, improve the environments and all that sort of stuff, the stories, dialogue. Maybe, maybe one day Bioware might consider it. I think they'd have a lot of success if they did that though. Because uh, imagine, you know, taking what uh, they did with Mass Effect 1 but applied, you know, the, the same level of polish uh, with something like, you know, Dragon Age Inquisition, for example. I mean, they did try to do that with Andromeda. That wasn't such a great game, unfortunately, but... Um, I think they could reattempt, could potentially make something that's, you know, at the level of Mass Effect 3, for example. Mass Effect 3 was pretty good. So, anyway, we have taken all the stuff from this base. Let's move on. And uh, we've got a... Oh, okay. Doesn't seem to be anything in there. Um, got to make our way to the other cluster and see if we can deal with the other syndicate boss. Actually, almost forgot, but uh, before we do that, we do have a few points of interest that we should check out on this planet before we leave. So let's get to it. I think we should be able to get to this anomaly pretty easily from here. Okay, I actually see something right on top of that mountain there, so I'm guessing we're going to need to do a little bit of climbing. Um, just trying to decide how we do that, because it was all pretty steep. Alright, I think we'll do... Uh, well, we'll attempt around this side to climb. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. <laughs> that uh, almost went south. What is going on here? Oh, uh, some dead guy there. And, uh, what is, what is that? down there. Um, anyway, let's, let's check out what's going on with this dead body here. Mummified Salarian. Let me guess. Uh, medallion. This dead traveler had a League of One medallion where he found it and what he was trying to do with it is unclear. 
Okay. And... What about that other thing down there? Let's hopefully take a look. There's old footprints leading away from this escape pod, but no sign of any survivors. Hmm. Okay. Well... Presumably, I think maybe that Solarian was in that escape pod, so... He uh, obviously didn't survive. Let's go to the debris here. See what we can find there. Of course, it's a crashed probe. That's alright. We shall take the loot. We are at that item limit uh, point as well, guys, so I might actually uh, do something about that off camera. But uh, anyway, we'll take all of this. Alright. And I think we are done on this planet. Just have a quick look at the map again. Yeah, definitely nothing else showing here. So let us return to the Normandy. And uh, we shall move on to the next cluster. But before we do that, I think this is actually a pretty good place for a little bit of a break, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a like, dislike, or a comment or two down below. Stay true, and I'll see you in the next one.